after each big update I usually do two videos. One, highlighting those exciting new features. We did this video already. And now today is time for our missing feature. This is more like a changelog where we analyze new features across updates and then complain a bit about those features still missing. All right, so let's get started with Affinity Designer. Version 2.0 was huge because they finally add a shape builder tool. We got a proper vector warp tool, so it was really good. Then soon after in 2.1 they add this highly requested bucket fill tool so we can actually make uh, nice vector shapes with just a flat fill like in core draw. That was nice. And they fixed the problem with dash lines. Then there was this new data entry method when we can kind of type from the keyboard exact size of the shape. They even update that in the next one, adding some more options to it. 2.4 give us a size and rotate objects of the same kind and to the same kind, layer states, and also now we can import and edit some additional formats coming from like AutoCAD and this kind of software. And in recent 2.5, they add brand new tool for changing the width of the line. So in the past, if you wanna play with the width of the line, you need to go for the stroke and then you must do a pressure manually here. Okay, let's give it a color so we can see the line, all right. So we can use it here, pressure, and we can adjust this way. All right, but now you can grab a dedicated tool and you can kind of add those pressure points live like that. So that's really handy. And even bigger update for the pencil tool. Now we got this pencil 2.5 that solves multiple problems with pencil and it's really usable, especially good on iPad. We got dedicated QR code shape so if you go to all of your shapes at the very bottom you got qr code when you can actually generate qr codes within the program that's handy and the qr code tool is a universal one across all three programs so affinity photo and publisher as well if there's sometimes a feature like that that was added into all three programs i usually highlight this only once for the one that is like the the most important in my case in it's important for designer, so I put it here, but it will work also in photo and publisher. All right, so that's new, but what is still missing? Auto trace, it's missing since version one, and people have been commenting, oh, it's coming in 1.1. <laughs> nope, it's coming in 1.5. It's coming in 1.9. It's coming in 2.0. And the newest gossip was, it's coming in 2.5. And guess what? Nope, it's still missing. And I don't understand this, especially for iPad users. There are so many people working with hybrid media when they start with some kind of raster sketches and they want to turn it into vectors easily and continue on in vector graphing software. I don't understand this. Okay, auto trace is still somehow missing. No auto blend. Mesh gradients are missing. Real vector brush, and every time I mention that, there's somebody in the comment section telling me, But Mark, there is a vector brush. Just look in the tool panel, there's a tool called Vector Brush Tool. Yep, it is. They name it Vector Brush Tool for some reason. And take a look. I just paint with the so called vector brush. Let's zoom in. Oh no, seems like they're just pixels. You know, this is just raster brush, stretch on the vector path. Take a look, I can modify the vector path, but what is at the top of that are pixels. So I, what I cannot do, I cannot kind of export this into like regular shape. I cannot extend the stroke like I should be able to do with the normal vector brush. So a real vector brush, right? And the big thing, right to left scripts are still not supported. Really, seriously, after so many updates, I cannot believe that. This is how they can easily steal thousands of customers from Core Draw. There are people just waiting to switch from Core Draw, waiting for this feature to be available. So it's still missing. 
All right, how about Affinity Photo? 2.0 was big like for all three programs and then we get less and less and less features. The last update 2.4 was just support from some new cameras and in 2.5 it's not better. What I listed here is uh, ARM support so we can use it on Surface on all of those new laptops with Qualcomm processors. So that's nice and that's also for all three programs. I, I listed it here because I think taking Affinity Photo on the go for photographers, that will be important. So that's a new thing, but nothing else, really. And what is still missing? AI select, AI replace, background removal with one click, new filters, but editing, and many, many more features that people have been complaining about. It's still missing. Not many new things in version 2, really, from beginning. Uh, they kind of ignoring Affinity Photo in the second generation. I don't know why. They kind of give up on fighting with Photoshop after they introduce Firefly or what? It's a bit sad and I'm hoping that this Canva friendship will help them a bit. Maybe they can take some know-how from Canva and finally input some of those missing features like th those basic AI tools that become a standard not only by Adobe but as also by smaller companies like background removal or just selections so we can kind of speed up the process here we don't want to do all by hand nowadays no time all right so not much for affinity photo how about publisher publisher it was really huge update for them and they released the iPad version as well together with version 2.0 and then we got a 2.2 very solid update focus on publisher that was like almost all new features for publisher then recently we got this password protected pdfs something we've been asking for but unfortunately no like fillable form pdfs yet we got some additional changes in 2.4 like precision alignments and the biggest update in 2.5 i believe that will be variable font We've been asking for this and we finally got access to variable fonts, the fonts that are designed with uh, sliders, what you can push left and right to change the property of the font within the program. It's really good. I'm going to make a separate tutorial all about it. It's a great feature. And of course, some features introduced across, all right? So we got ARM support as well, and we got QR code tool as well in publisher all right so not much for publisher i would say but very welcome feature with this font support what is still missing pdf forms i mentioned once more right to left script it's really important here we got some scripts that people want to use we need a better pdf export if you like going to print those publications you need a solid export caption EPUB export, so there are still some important key features missing here as well. So if you've been sitting waiting for update or for buying this software, here it is, version 2.5, now you know what is still missing. I hope this short video was helpful and if you got some complaints, feel free to put them down in the comment section. This is missing features video, so I will allow a bit of those negative comments you would say, I know. I know sometimes even devs like to take a peek, look into your comments. Maybe, maybe they will look and fix some of those missing features by adding them in the future updates. But here we are in the middle of the generation, version 2.5 already, just four more updates and then a paid version 3.0. All right, thank you for today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.